Yeah, Mark, welcome to Denver, first of all. Um, could you take us could you take us through the process of uh, just being out there, you know, in free agency, not signing with the team, and how you ended up, you know, deciding to, to play for the Broncos? Um, well, really just, you know, with all the all the, the, the situations that were presented to me, this just ended up being the best one, and I felt like it was the best fit with uh, with everything that was in place already and with the coaching staff. So, uh, you know, I simply put it, I just felt like it was the best fit for me. Next up, Brandon Cristal. Mark, what happened in Pittsburgh? You obviously were a big part of what the Rams did. You still had 80 yeah. tackles last year on a two-year deal. Why do you think that you're not still a Steeler? Well, uh, you know, cap situations. Um, and really, I've, I've been in that situation really my the last two seasons I played, uh, what you call it, a, a cap casualty. Obviously, you know, they had the, uh, the young first-round pick in Devin, Bish, uh, Devin Bush, who was, uh, you know, was a good young player. And then they had the vet guy who they – uh, basically have a lot of loyalty to and uh, Vincent Williams and they both good players and uh, somebody had to go, you know what I mean? Because they had to, had to save money somewhere. So, you know, it just ended up being me. I don't think it was a, I mean, it was communicated to me. I, it wasn't a, a play thing where my play wasn't good enough. It was just, a, a, you know, you know how to cap situations go. Next up, Jeff Legwell. Uh, Mark, can you just kind of describe the, the weirdness of a, of a visit during COVID time. I mean, you've been here since right. Thursday or Thursday, so. Yeah. I, yeah. How, how, how did that go? And, and what um, was that? It, was, it was definitely uh, different. And, and I guess you could call it boring because really, you know, I, I had to come in and I had to do, uh, I had to have three negative COVID tests and essentially for the rest of the day, I was doing nothing. Um, so a lot of just sitting around, which is, you know, that, that, that's not pleasant, uh, but I mean, it, it's necessary. You know, I had to do what I had to do, so it worked out. But I guess, uh, did you feel like that was part of the decision uh, with picking a team is you don't want to go through all that if you're not going to uh, get them at look? But. Well, yeah, I definitely uh, didn't want to have a bunch of visits where I had to go, you know, through that whole protocol. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say that it, it played a role in my decision making. My decision making was all just, uh, what was the best situation? Um, but yeah, definitely didn't want to have to do, you know, a, a ton of visits and having to go sit around for three days in multiple different cities. Next up, Eric Delala. Yeah, Mark, uh, how much do you think you can help this team as a coverage linebacker, and how does your experience as a safety kind of help you in that area? Um, well, I, I mean, I think it helps a lot. I, um, obviously, I have a lot of experience doing the the, you know, playing that coverage role and covering tight ends and linebackers. So, um, you know, if that's what they need me to do, I, I definitely feel like I can get that job done. And um, as far as me playing safety and playing linebacker over the years, I think it's really just a, a knowledge thing where I've played in a, a bunch of different roles and I'm a pretty versatile guy, a flexible guy, so I can do a, a, you know, a number of things for the defense if, if asked to do those things. So um, I think just that, that flexibility is, uh, is where I can help out at. Next up, Andrew Mason. Hey, Mark, how did the uh, COVID-19 pandemic affect uh, your workouts, your ability to stay in shape, and uh, what kind of condition do you think you're in as you arrive with the Broncos? Um, well, I, I was able to work around it, but obviously, you know, it, it, it was different. You know, I kind of had to do everything uh, essentially on my own. I wasn't going into a, a, you know, a big gym or anything, you know, home workouts, uh, just having to stay on top of everything for the most part by myself. Uh, I feel like I'm in a pretty solid shape, um, but obviously it's, it's a difference between, uh, you know, actually getting in shape playing football and getting in shape working out, you know, outside of football. So those, those are two different things. I'm in solid shape, but um, obviously, you know, like I said, it's, it's a difference between in game or in football uh, being in shape and outside of football being in shape. Next up, Nick Kosmeyer. Hey, Mark, thanks for taking the time. Uh, I'm wondering what kind of familiarity you had with, with any guys on this team already and, and maybe who reached out to you uh, as you came on and then being an Alabama guy, just joining mm -hmm. with, with Jerry Judy and what, and what you think of him. Um, I haven't seen much of him. Today was our first day. Well, my first day speaking on Jerry Judy. Uh, but I've heard a lot of good things about what he's been doing in camp, so I'm excited and looking forward to watching him and seeing him develop. Um, as far as people on the team, I know a few guys. Like, I know uh, – you know, Vaughn, obviously, I know Kareem. We played together in college. Uh, I know Deontay Spencer. Uh, he played with me last year in Pittsburgh. So I, I had some familiarity with a, with a few guys. 
Um, and a couple of them reached out. I spoke to a couple of them before I came in. So that, that was cool. That's always good walking into the new locker room. Uh, you know, seeing some familiar faces or knowing some people that's already, you know, in that locker room. Next up, Zach Stevens. Go ahead, Zach. Hey, Mark, what role do you expect to have on this defense? Um, well, I wouldn't necessarily say I, I expect to have any role. Like, obviously, I'm going to uh, do what they ask me to do, but I, I would assume that they want me to uh, help in some, some coverage aspects as far as covering tight ends and running backs. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm taking this thing a day at a time. I got a, a whole defensive playbook to learn, uh, and it's a lot. So uh, just taking it one day at a time and, and, and trying to get familiar with, you know, what we want to do here. Last one, Brandon Kristall, go ahead. Well, you mentioned guys that you knew. You left off the mm -hmm. biggest guy. I imagine DeMar Dotson is as big as oh, he was yeah, when you yeah, were in Tampa for three years. Uh, and you yeah, saw him at his best. What, what do you, can you tell us about him? Doc, man, the thing I would speak on with DeMar Dotson is longevity. Uh, I mean, Doc was already in the league uh, for a few years before I came in uh, going to Tampa. And uh, he seems to be still playing at a high level all these years later, man. So, uh that's, that's one of the things I'll speak on with Dodgers is longevity. Obviously, you know, he's a, a huge, a huge guy, uh, a lot of length and, uh, you know, knowledgeable, savvy guy who, who's been around for a while. So I'm, I'm sure he's doing great things here and helping this team out.